Hello everyone and welcome to this week's episode of Guardians of Haven. Where are my notes? There they are. Um, oh, when would Dice just resubscribe? Thank you, Calvin. Yeah, I forgot about it. That's cool. Um, welcome to this week's episode of Guardians of Haven, Operation Mindcrime. Uh, thank you for joining us for your weekly dose of superhero shenanigans. My name is Alex and I will be your humble game master this evening. Tonight we are playing Mutants and Masterminds, the world's greatest superhero RPG, which is produced by Green Running Publishing. It is a D20 system that focuses on exciting superhero action with a character creation system that offers unlimited customization options to create your superhero. Uh, one of my favorite like game mechanics ever is found in Eminem. That is the use of hero points as a currency the players have that changes the fate of the story. Uh, these points could be used for rerolls, player scene editing, and even modifying or improving a character's powers in a pinch. Andy was going to say something, then I steamrolled over him i was because it seems like we're very delayed on twitch tonight just fyi i don't have any drop frames so i don't know what that's about right, well it might just maybe it's just me let me refresh it and we'll see hmm. look at that deuce go and hey thank you for resubscribing deuce deuce says go cat go so i assume that means he wants cat to have that free <laughs> I don't know what y'all are so worried about. I'm worried that you're going to kill all of us mentally. I would never do that. Yes, yes, you would. Not at the same time. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The R budget can't afford dudes. that. <laughs> Appreciate the point. Uh, Calvin, who do you want your hero point to go to? Oh. Can he give uh, it to himself? Yeah, he threatened you earlier, <laughs> he Calvin. Can if he can. <laughs> <laughs> Give yourself a hero point. <laughs> he can do give it. it to me if he's feeling brave. Oh, don't do it, Calvin. You know oh. it's the worst idea ever. No, don't Has give anyone it done him. that before? Has anyone given a point to the GM before? I have. Yes. Well, not a player, but If we say yes, will it make you not do that? Yeah, it's it's not new, so don't do it. It's not a Marvel <laughs> foil cover number one. Don't do it. <laughs> it's a first edition holographic Charizard. He already has, like, unlimited hero points. Just give it to yourself, Calvin. Ah, uh, what the heck. Yeah. I'm going to give it to the GM. <laughs> <laughs> Ow, this is what Caesar felt like on the Ides of March. <laughs> we, we all knew it was coming. Eventually, Alara was going to betray us all. Yeah. Calvin, to reward you for your nepotism, I will give you an extra hero point. <laughs> oh my god! Congratulations! Phoenix has moved down the list. <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. Jonesy, thank you for resubscribing. Do you still want to give that to Calvin, or do you want to give it to somebody else? Uh, you were threatening Calvin off screen before we joined the game tonight, so yes. Wow. He doesn't deserve it based on the fact that he's he is giving ammo to the enemy, but right. like he he deserves it. He expects your character to backstab us, not you. <laughs> Well, what could happen with it? I don't know. Hey, Robnix, how are you doing, man? <laughs> don't you're, distract. You're don't here distract. in time for the hype chain and the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what I would do with a hero point. I don't know if the GM will do the hero point. <laughs> Andy, who do you want to give your hero point to? Jonesy. <laughs> Everybody's walking in with a couple of hero points. <laughs> All right, that was fun. Cloning <laughs> um, hero points like the Moon Moon Twins. <laughs> wow. I'm done. <laughs> we'll postpone till next now. Monday. Oh, this is the, this is the peak of the stream. We're not going to get any better than this tonight. Well, actually, that's that might be true. I mean, till we unpack the philosophical ramifications of your question of the day, like, there won't be time for games. It's going to take all night. Here for it. Welcome to our TED talk. Um, <laughs> <laughs> hero points are earned by leaning into genre tropes acting heroically good role playing jokes that think are funny jokes that think aren't funny suffering setbacks just like superheroes and other media and as you've seen from you the audience if you donate like subscribe uh you are given a free hero point that you can give to me or to them if you want whatever oh my god um just as a reminder, thanks to Wiki, we have a bunch of fun new emotes here on Twitch. There's options for followers and for subscribers. If you click the little face in the chat window, you should see a collection of Untold Stories project emotes, including Hook and Alex, Rude with a Little Canadian Quarter, uh, We Love Shapes, all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, 
Oh, Wiki, I didn't see your resub come through, but uh, who would you like to give a hero point to? God. Not Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> Gnarly Nick wants to know if chairs exist, and that is a hard question to answer. They only exist in your perception of chairs. <laughs> Magic. <laughs> Um, but we have gathered some psionic projections of heroes tonight. Say good night and good luck, heroes. Good night, night and good luck, good heroes. heroes. I'm not uh, saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I want to give everyone a chance to tell us a little bit about themselves, the character they will be playing, and have them answer my question of the day, which is, would you rather be forced to live the same day over and over again for a full year or take three years off the end of your life? And I'm going to start with Kat. I have questions. Sure. <clears throat> Do I know when I die? No. Okay. Um, also, do, do I remember, like, I'm assuming that each day I remember what I did the day before. And yes. All the way through the year. Yep. Then I'm definitely picking live the same day over and over again for a year. Because in my, because I can do whatever I want with no consequences. I'm frightened all of a sudden. Like, okay, but like, <laughs> for real. <laughs> Um, and like, I'm not even talking about evil stuff. Like, imagine that you want to have a conversation with somebody, but it's like a tough conversation. Um, and you're just sort of like, I don't know how this would go with them. One of those days, you can just have that conversation with them and see how it goes. And then decide if on the last day, on the 365th day, you actually want to have that conversation. Or not. Like, there's so much you could do with that. Also, hi, I'm Kat. I'm playing Ursa. <laughs> <laughs> the telekinetic moon moon twin. <laughs> um, you can only find me here on Mondays. Uh, so sorry about that because I'm a, I'm a delight. Um, yeah, so I guess that's my answer. I don't, do I pass it to Andy? Do I pass it to whoever I want? It's chaos. You can pass it to whoever you want to. Jonesy. Also, Wiki, I will I will give that hero point to Alara, and I cloned one to give it to uh, Andy as well. So, uh, <laughs> hi everybody, uh, I am Jonesy. Uh, I will be playing the fabulous flamboyant Flynn, uh, the best, greatest space pirate ever to sail the seas. Uh, as far as the question of day, it's badly ill-defined on Alex's part, and. Uh, <laughs> Because uh, we don't know if is that that one day like the same day over and over again is that only for me is that for everyone does everyone know that I've been missing for a year or is it just like blink I'm there and then I'm not there it's or... like Groundhog Day where you're the only one who's aware that it keeps happening yes but does time keep moving for everyone else no they're stuck in the same day as you but they don't know that they're stuck in the same day fine I'll stick to I'll take to the year then. My thing is, you don't know when you're going to die. So what if you're going to die in three years, and then you choose that, and then you're just dead? <laughs> and then you die. <laughs> <laughs> like... Sorry. <laughs> I'm heated about this question for some reason. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, I will, uh, I will kick it down to Calvin. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, I'm Calvin, and I'm playing the uh, telepathic Moon Moon Twin, the psychic from the dark side of the moon, Alara. Um, I'm here on Mondays and soon to be Tuesdays, and also over on the Women's Ice channel, where we have weekly podcasts and gaming streams. Uh, to answer the question of the day, so Alara's answer to this at first would have been, I already lived the same day over and over again. But I didn't realize it was a Groundhog Day thing. So... <laughs> Yeah, for sure. She would use it to scheme repeatedly until she figures out the thing that'll work for her for her to get what she wants with zero consequence to herself. What about and, Calvin? Um, I don't know. I get bored and distracted pretty easily. Doing the same thing over and over again for like 10 minutes. <laughs> is the headache for me so <laughs> do you for a year that would probably take three years off my life anyway <laughs> so yeah i guess i'll choose the latter and i'll pass it over to andy 
Hey, I'm Andy. I'm here Monday nights for our superhero shenanigans. You can also find me over on our website when I write blog posts and over on our YouTube channel where I host the StoryForge series. Uh, tonight I am playing Aelin, our Arcanthian Femme Fatale. And to answer the question of the day, uh, thank you, Jonesy, for asking the relevant questions because I was like, I, was, I had to ask Alex, mm -hmm. is like, is this the Stargate SG-1 episode where they live the same six hours over and over again, but it's just extended to a day and yet time passes for everybody else. Uh, so there was a whole lot of questions to that. Um, I, <laughs> since I don't know when I'm going to die, I will take the living the same day over and over again, because I'm fairly certain I can find enough things in that time frame to do rather than, you know, basically find out that, oh yeah, tomorrow's the day I die. <laughs> so, uh, with that, I'll pass it up to Kevin who is last this week and not first. Awesome. Uh, <laughs> And thank all of you groundbreakers for sort of delving into the nuances of this question so I didn't have to. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the movie Groundhog Day, it really isn't the same day over. I mean, it's the same calendar day, but he's doing different things all the time. I think Kat really kind of hit on the head, like your opportunities to explore options on a day that repeats to see the outcomes, that's, that's actually very intriguing, I think. And even if it was like, a literal static repeat like i don't know about all of y'all but like i've watched the same movie more than once i've read the same book more than once like sometimes even if everything is unchanged there's nuance that you didn't see before that you would get so i i don't know that i would see unless of course alex gets to pick the day that i have to live over again then i'd say just kill me now no, <laughs> <laughs> but and on any given day that wasn't awful the first time around uh yeah i mean i think the opportunities there would be definitely like do that day 65 times and see what you can see well and and the other good thing with this i think uh alex didn't say this specifically but since we remember that day assuming that we remember that day means that that entire year that we spend on that same day if you spend it doing a skill or multiple skills you will be a heck of a lot more productive outside of that year oh it's like we've turned into a traveler rpg no let's not go there let's not go, <laughs> let's not go there <laughs> Too much time spent training. Okay. Anyway. Congratulations, you died during character creation. Hey, <laughs> you'll be happy to know, Jones, that they took that bit out. But otherwise, Traveler is unchanged for forty plus years. Over to Alex. Let's see him answer his own question of the day. Yeah, for much the same reason, I would like to live the same day over and over and over again. Maybe, maybe we can make it a stream day, and we can play oh, a different game every night. <laughs> That might be fine for the first week, and then I'll be like, you know what, we're just, we're skipping this week. <laughs> <laughs> um, does it change anyone's answers if I say that you have to live the exact same day, the exact same way every day, like a That's looped purgatory? <laughs> yeah, no. We, but no, then I'll we don't, die. We don't <laughs> well, but, know. But like I said, you know, if I watch the same, the movie doesn't change when I watch it again, but I get new different nuance and, and a different perspective on it having viewed it again so even if the actions don't change what i could learn about that day will still be 365 times more than i did going through it the first time i'm here for it i think it's great thank you for indulging me my uh my nonsense question uh i think without further ado we're good to go ahead and get started so Last time on Nether War, our heroes. Nether War. God damn it! Wow. <laughs> Still, chat, God chat. You it. have to understand. Nether War are the characters he's designing villains, to play, <laughs> and that's why he can't get it out of his brain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Power level twelve, Freedom League, Dark. Burr, burr, burr. Well, we're playing Freedom no, League, Dark. Alex. Tonight. No, Alex. <laughs> I said next time we just quietly open those characters and see what he does. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so uh <laughs> why does that keep Chimera happening? Being this fast. I don't come here get so fast. I don't know. I'm literally <laughs> looking at Guardians of Haven on two screens right now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Where your treasure is, so too is your heart. Oh my god. Hmm. That was Welcome poignant. to Guardians of Hades. <laughs> All right, last time on Guardians of Haven. That's the game we're playing. That's the game we've been playing for 17 weeks, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> Our 
Our heroes emerge from the depths of the robot factory after having narrowly escaped with their lives and sacrificing the life of Phoenix to the robots that lived within to find that the war in the streets had come to a standstill. Uh, Deputy Director Francois Yassine uh, claimed to everyone that the crisis was under control. Aegis and Unison personnel have quelled the uprising in the Central District thanks to a fresh wave of Daedalus's robots and the peaceful, peaceful mediation of the Children of Chrysalis. Uh, they put a curfew in effect, and uh, they said that uh, they put a curfew in effect until they could put apprehend the final pockets of criminal activity, including a much maligned reward of a hundred thousand credits for Public Enemy Number One, the crew of the Marion, who think that they should be worth much, much more. Damn right. Um, our crew is still at large, so they were able to make their way across town to get underneath. Uh, back into the treehouse, where they met Agris and Gruck, and had a an awkward conversation about Eric's brain, and some of the horrible secrets between our two Moon Moon twins, that exploded into a conflict where Cat got to yell at Calvin, and it was uncomfortable for everybody. Sorry, Calvin. But I have one. I'm not gonna have one on Tuesdays. Oh man. <laughs> we can find you one. <laughs> <laughs> um, after that they sent Gruck to go check in with Angelique Decatur who informed them that um, she is still able to do this psychic uh, ritual for lack of a better word psychic process to fix Eric's brain uh, the group also checked in on their lead with Valerius Cornu the fellow who supposedly abducted Daedalus um they got a, They called the school that he worked at, and they found out that he just walked into his office, which was suspicious. Uh, the group uh, snuck over to the Iapix Academy, where they spoke with Valerius, who turns out is a big old nerd who doesn't have any friends and who has a stolen identity. And Flynn and Ursa both flirted with him very sweetly uh, before telling him to get a life, and then they headed off to... Uh, they headed off to go round up everybody and head to Angelique's, which is where we are picking up the action today. Did they miss anything that anybody wants to chat about? Ursa didn't flirt with him. She said he was cute and he needs to get off his ass and go work for relationships. Hmm. Different. That's flirty for Ursa, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, there was a smidge of kindness in there. I mean, no. Alara's the mean one. <laughs> These things are relative, you know? <laughs> um, but everybody sat down within the... Uh, everybody sat down in the basement, put it on put on these helmets, and they were transported into Eric's uh, subconscious. Uh, everybody, including Agris. Oh, no. <laughs> And uh, we join everyone uh, standing in the sort of twisted, bombed-out remnants of Eric's mind. Uh, there are a couple of weird spectral buildings around that the um, that Ursa was able to rebuild alongside Eric. But right now, as you're all standing here, it's very uh, twisted and warped and dark, and there's not much terrain to look at. What would you all like to do? Is this what mines usually look like? Looking at Alara. <clears throat> um, it still looks under repair, but somewhat. Ones that have been damaged, at least. If there's more to fix, then there must be some, I don't know, something we can look for or a source of this damage, or... That's the worst. Well, Ursa, we think you've been here before. You should lead, yes? Suppose the repairs that you see I've already done, but there's only so much that I can do by myself. So, uh, over there is where I saw Lady, Lu Lady Luna. I don't know if she's gone or not. I'm not really sure. 
And Ursa, when you point over in that direction, you do notice that as you are sort of talking about Lady Lunar is over there, you do see this structure starting to build itself out of Eric's synapses. Almost this sort of dark gothic uh, castle made of semi-transparent black light. Big spires, gargoyles, bad news. Well, I suppose that we need to get rid of that. Um, is this structure familiar at all to far side? Or uh, it? it does not appear to be a far side structure. Uh, well, give me a. You have an expertise far side skill. Technically, I should, but I don't. I do. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I haven't upgraded it, so it's only a four. But <laughs> really, get that. I only got a 12, yeah. Uh, looking at it, Ursa, um, and Alara, I'll say you looking at it with your twin sister, Link, uh, you both sort of realize that it's kind of like a strange um, corruption of the Far Side Palace. Okay. Um, well, that's as good a place to start as any, so... Everybody just ready yourselves. There could be literally anything in there. Mm, oh. Shall we then? Uh, everyone's ready. We think ready is in. <laughs> is a word we should not be using at this point. Um, yeah, I guess Alara will start to move towards the building. Ursa. Excellent. So everybody is making their way towards the building. Yeah. Uh, getting across is pretty, pretty simple. Um, the ground itself is very almost porous and sponge-like as your feet sink down into the muck of the gray matter that forms um, Eric's mind. And each of you, give me a perception check. Perception. Perception, not deception. Ha ha! Six. <laughs> Flynn gave me a persuasion oh. check. Uh, I apologize. I clicked one button, one row too low, <laughs> but they're the same ranks, so. Oh, okay. I'm cool with that. 18 for Aelin. For Ursa. I, uh, I smooth talk this in uh, the environment and get it to tell me what I need to know. That might work here. <laughs> Seriously. I'm just way to the psychic background. <laughs> Mouth just appears. Yeah, go that way. <laughs> Excellent. Um, so as you are making your way, anybody who got a 15 or higher, so everybody but Chimera. <laughs> Uh, you notice sort of set in behind the castle as you're approaching, there's these sort of strange trapezoid-shaped glowing blue eyes looking down uh, from the strange gray matter sky. And they seem to regard you with a cold maliciousness, indifference, it's a little hard to tell. Were these here when you were last here, Ursa? Oh, the structure was not here. I only saw Lady Luna herself. Hmm. So I'm not sure what that means, that this is here now. Well, <laughs> maybe we should move quicker. Indeed. 
So you start moving quicker. As you approach the structure, um, you notice in the causeway that leads up to the double doors that lead in, there is a cloaked figure holding a green lantern. In brightest day? <laughs> in blackest night, even. Uh, and the figure, uh, its uh, face is concealed by a hood, even though it holds this lantern aloft. Uh, it doesn't seem to penetrate the darkness behind the, behind the robe. Who are you <coughs> who come here? We're here to help. Whom? To help Eric. And it sort of raises the lantern aloft and says, step forward. First, I will step forward first. Because, you know, it's her boyfriend. <laughs> Anyone should die. The uh, lantern figure says, I was not speaking to you. Well, Laura will step up next to her sister. And the uh, figure sort of waves the lantern back and forth. And as it does, Alara, uh, the green light sort of settles on you. And you feel this sort of almost like smoke wafting across your skin that turns from green to yellow. What is this? Your intentions are not what you say. Uh, of course they are. We came in here to help Eric get his mind back in order. You are a threat to my host. Your host? Who are you? It is not for you to know. Well, if you're stopping us, I think we have a right to know. I'm not stopping all of you. He sort of, his hood adjusts to look over at Ursa. Why are you here? As she said, we're here to help Eric. I'm not asking about the group. Well, if I say we are here to help Eric, then clearly I am also here to help Eric. We shall see. And it waves the lantern back and forth again. And this time as the green sort of smoke and light settles across Ursa's body, it remains green. He says, you may enter. I don't wish to enter without my sister. Your wishes are not my concern. I will not leave her out here by herself. She is not here. What? I feel like I'm right here. She has a projection. I I don't understand. I mean, technically we'd all be projections, but we're all here in the same way. Yes, isn't she just as real as I am? You have all traveled here by the same method, but not with the same lightness. There is evil in that one. Well, Alara just crosses her arms. Regardless of what you seem to believe, I do want to help Eric get better. Then why have you contributed to his state? I contributed how? I'm not the one that broke him in this way. Not directly. Well, if nothing else, I can make up for whatever damage I may have caused. This one's purpose is not atonement. You know what her purpose is. Or you just know what it's not. That one's purpose is to dominate. To subjugate. Well, she is the rightful ruler of our kingdom. 
So that would be one of her purposes, yes. She is but a shade of them. Shade of who? Of the rightful ruler. And who do you believe to be the rightful ruler? He raises his other hand and points to the back of the group at Astaria. Really? Well, I've had quite enough of this, frankly. We're here to do something important, and you're stopping us. So if you're not going to help, then if you don't mind, and then she is going to attempt to walk around this very distracting figure. He stomps his foot and the brain shakes. Uh, what are you doing? Only the worthy may enter. And what are you going to do to keep her from entering? Destroy her. Yeah. Really? You're going to fight me in the mindscape? Very clear, you don't know who I am. Would any of you vouch for this one? I've been vouching for her this whole time! Not you, you're a shade of her. A shade. What about you, the triplicate one? Us. Step forward. Aelin will do so. What is your purpose here? We are here to help our friend. And she inclines her head towards Ursa. The figure noticed that. And uh, waves the lantern back and forth and the green settles across Aelin and once again it stays green. We assume we have passed your test. You are worthy to enter. What say wonder, you about the domineer? We wonder if by entering the domineer may yet change her ways. We think that there is a chance this place can and will be used as a place of healing, but only if we all are allowed to enter. Only as a, only as a family may we fix what's been broken. This one once thought this could be a place of healing as well. This is a place of pain. And that is what you will all find within. If it is a place of pain, then we are not unfamiliar with that. We can change it if it is willing to change. But we cannot do anything if we are stuck out here. And is the shade willing to change? It directs its attention over to Alara again. Of course I am. The Trinity has spoken for you. You may enter. And it directs its attention up again. Captain. step forward. Flynn can nod, does the, the little head nod and steps forward. What is your purpose here? Ah. In this case, it's to aid my crew. It waves the green lantern again. And the fo fire and smoke settles green on Flint and the shade nods and says you may proceed. 
African or European stuff for it. <laughs> you there. The preserver. I do not know that you can enter this place as you are. I think only an aspect of you may. But which aspect would you send forward? The man or the monster? Are you referring to me? Indeed. I am not a preserver. Your perceptions are mistaken. I am an artifice of the preservers, and I am duty sworn to protect and support Mistress Aileen. That is my purpose here. You implied disparity where there is none. You're not even aware of what lives inside you. Much like your mistress, there are three voices within you. And there is discordance between those voices. I see the most prominent one, the preserver. But I also see the artifice and I see the man. And I cannot permit all three of you to enter. It would be very dangerous for the one you call Eric. To my understanding, the preserver has never been part of who I am, merely in contact. The man I was is no more. I am simply part of this. Then the artifice shall enter. And he raises the lantern, and as he does, the green sort of fire sort of strikes out, uh, washes over Chimera. And there is a deep ripping sound as this dark spectral figure is yanked out of his body and sent up into the subconscious. Uh, leaving the gray Chimera unit standing next to a human who looks very much like Agent Jones. Um, so not coincidence. Curious. Wh who's that? That is the man that was once Chimera. Was once Chimera? Or was before Chimera? Chimera once was. and he, is... he's sort of um the human is sort of sort of kind of got this paralyzed look of terror on his face uh, but he's not moving What's wrong with him he has been trapped inside a chimera unit for some time now what was the other shade that you sent away that was the preserver it has been lurking in your unit's mind for a purpose I cannot ascertain but I assume to be malevolent you are strong enough to repel a being who transcends the bounds of realities as we understand them only within this reality. Curious. Have you known many preservers to operate on the standard moral compass of most sapients of the modern universe? No. So this preserver would seem to be an aberration of some type. Curious. Well, their clinical the... indifference can often be 
misconstrued as malevolence, but this one, this one is more dangerous than the others. For the record, the voice there was uh, brains and not standard Aelin. Mm. Chimera, are, are you okay? I am functioning within acceptable parameters, yes. He is going to be even more Chimera-like in this state. I will tend to Agent Jones while you are within. What? The man here. Ursa will sort of give Flynn a look. Isn't Agent Jones your boyfriend? Strong word. For lack of better terminology. He is a friend I spend time with, yes. Your statement would infer that the being that I was is existing coterminously with another aspect of itself. Is this accurate? The Agent Jones that the captain knows is this one's brother. Oh my god. Gosh, you're sleeping with Chimera's brother. <laughs> Curious. This is Charles Jones. The captain has been associating with Harrison Jones. Hey. Captain, were you aware that your paramour's sibling was missing? No. It's not really first date conversation. Conversation? <laughs> well, <laughs> not good pillow talk either. <laughs> that, old, that old internal monologue gets him every time. <laughs> well, if that's all done, are we good to go? You may enter if that is what you wish. I still sort of give like a weird side eye to Alara because she's the only one who didn't pass. And then we'll walk in. <laughs> um, Alara is wrangling with these revelations, but will probably make a mental note to follow up on this when they are in the mindscape and proceed to head to the structure. Draw forth my rapier just to be ready. And, uh, step into the room. Chimera? Yes, mistress. Are you ready? Indeed. Then we should follow the others. Very well. And we will follow after. Um, does he stop Agris and uh, Astaria? Uh, he does. He goes through a similar ritual with them. Okay. And uh, notably, they both also pass. Oh. <laughs> there, 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 there. Um, well, well, there, there. <laughs> Alara, as you pass through the threshold of these massive double doors that lead into the castle, will you give me one more perception check? It's pretty good. 24. 24 is pretty good. You feel a presence in your mind. Uh, you see again the glowing blue eyes that you noticed. Um, but I'm going to share something with you that everybody else doesn't notice. Sad. I don't like secrets. As I, hope you, know. uh, I hope he doesn't hit the accidental wrong slash in uh, roll 20 like I did that time I was trying to pass the secret. I said, no, oh, everybody <laughs> saw it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you know that they're, they're getting ready to add a hide feature in roll 20 chat? 
<laughs> so if you do if you do that in accident, you could then go and click on hide and we'll hide the last message. Really? That's pretty dope. Yep. Wow. Unsend. Mess up all the time, Kevin, and no consequences. Don't don't give me this kind of freedom, people. You're just going down the thunder. <laughs> Yeah, Laura, um, do you see the handout in your journal? Oh, in the journal, okay. Um, the one that says vision. Yes, I do. <coughs> Alara wouldn't know anything about this. Correct. Oh. Well, she, is she well informed? No. no. I'll double check, but no. <clears throat> okay. Uh, but you feel that presence. It flashes in your mind for a moment. You see uh, that <coughs> figure uh, flood your subconscious. And you feel suddenly uneasy. Uh, but as each of you passes through the double doors, uh, you find yourself standing in the grand entranceway of a large castle. Um you can see a small bottle version of the city of Farside. Farside City, not the city of Farside. Um, the bottled city of Farside, Candor. Yep. <laughs> As you're looking. Uh, there's a grand staircase that goes up uh, from where you are. The uh, ambiance of this room is sort of that same semi transparent black construct. It might be a hard light, hard thought. You're not 100% sure. Uh, but you also see there is a series of doors, each that has your names on them. And there are several suits of armor uh, sitting at the base of the staircase that step to each of you and point at your door in turn. Why are there doors with our names inside of Eric's mind? We never think met that, most of you. Well, he did for the brief time that he was part of our traveling party. Before we ditched him on the streets of Starhaven. Alex, nobody asked you. Augurus <laughs> 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 Jush. Augurus wouldn't say that. <laughs> A Starhaven, maybe. <laughs> totally. That there may be some other presence in here. Fear that well. Lady Luna is still here, and this is her doing. We would think that to be a logical conclusion. We now sound like Chimera. This is odd. Curious. This is sufficient, though. Uh, when you say <laughs> that, Cat, you do see. Um, a large banner unfurls on the wall behind you, above the double doors, uh, that has Lady Lunar's crest on it. Yeah. Any chance that there's a way to not go in those doors? The uh, armored statues shake their heads no. Asking you. You know. Very polite. <laughs> we would ask for a greater explanation, though we know we will not get one. Statues look at each other, and they look back at you, and they shrug their shoulders. We have been proven right. Are you people? They shrug their shoulders again. Can you take your helmet off? They look at one another, and then they slowly look back at you, and they shake their head very slowly in a way... Give me an inside check. In a way that triggers a wall. I'm not sure. <laughs> 20. Uh, you get the impression that they're trying to convey the idea that they are able to remove their helmets, but they don't think it would be good for you. Good. 
So what do we want to do, team? Also, with the 20 insight check, Ursa, I'll oh. say that the, their, their body language reads very similar to Eric's to you. Just the way they sort of carry themselves and the way they move through the space. That's So, what do you guys think? To the team, not to the army. Pick a door, any door. <laughs> Everybody just go in each other's doors. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the knights shake their heads no. <laughs> I know that may cause additional complications, should we do so. <laughs> if our goal is to help Eric, I don't know that that's the way to accomplish that. So what, what, is the challenge trying to figure out what they do if we go through the door? Is that what we're, we're, we're concerned about? Uh, we don't know what's waiting for us beyond these doors. We... The next thing is waiting beyond the closed door. And with that, Flynn will walk up to his door and open it. I believe the captain is correct that further delay does not serve our purpose. Flynn is pulled into his door and the door slams shut behind him. Oh. Unfortunately, Mr. Salen, I do not believe I will be able to protect you while here pursuing the pathway to your, through your specific door. So please choose caution. Well, we would ask the same of you. Please. All of you. Save our Reckless. Too late. Save, save our <laughs> save our reckless leader. Fearless is the what I was going for, but okay. <laughs> wow. What is fearlessness but recklessness? Personally? Sorry, Jonesy. Um, Aelin will go up and give Chimera a hug. Um, return to Alara and Ursa and give both of them a hug. And look at Alara and say. We hope we did not speak too presumptuously at the front, but we think there's a chance this place may be something we all need. And she'll head to her door before Alara can answer. <laughs> <laughs> Alara wasn't sure what to say. <laughs> she, I think by the time she would have thought of something, she looks up and Aelin's already gone. And um, again, there's a very violent pulling of Aelin into the door when she puts her hand on the handle. Is there a door for... I'm assuming there's a door for Astaria. Is there a door for Augurus in here? There is. He seems kind of nervous about going in there. Yep. Fair. <laughs> Since Aelin has departed, Chimera will approach his door. Chimera is also pulled into his door. Ursa will sort of look at Alara and just like do an awkward smirk and be like, well, uh, I guess I'll see you on the other side. Of course. Go save Eric. I'll be right behind you. In a different door, but behind you. I trust you will. And then she'll go over to her door. In she goes. Um, <laughs> Alara. <laughs> oh boy. All this trust towards me. Alara is going to go towards Augurus, Um And she is going to remove the pendant that she has around her neck. And she is going to hand it over to him while, with one hand while showing that, I guess, her mental projection still has the tape that he made for her uh, in her coat pocket. And she's going to say, whatever happens in there, I know I have something from you on me. And I want you to have something from me with you too, in case whatever's in there is too much to handle by yourself. He looks at the uh, amulet and he holds it close. And he says, uh, there's nothing you can't do. I, 
this is a lot scarier than I thought it was going to be. Sort of looks around. But I know that I know that and you can... she is going to just <laughs> Yes, it's I I don't know. This is somewhat unexpected. I think this is outside interference. Most likely Lady Luna or something else. I don't know. And he puts a big chillaxin hand on your shoulder. He says, whatever she's doing, you could stop her. I intend to. And I intend to come back for that, so don't go dying on me. He's going to give you a big hug. Oh, she's going to bury her face in his big furry chillaxin chest. And everything's going to be all right. Yes. It will be. And he puts the pendant on over his head. And, uh, yeah. Once the embrace is over, Alar will head to her door. And Alar, as you head over to your door, you are stopped by one of the knights before you go in. Oh? I passed the test outside. I'm all clear now. We'll be watching. <laughs> 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 one voice. Yeah. One voice. Where would all these bows come from? Got to plug the t-shirt when we can. <laughs> oh, they're not knights. They're bowmen. <laughs> so much less. <laughs> and uh, they sort of look at you together, and they look at the door, and they give you this the sort of intense stare up down for a moment. Alara will stare back at them as she goes to open the door. One of them will turn in a voice that's sort of interlaced with Eric's and a voice that's interlaced with this strange Russian voice you've never heard before. Also, you don't know what Russia is? <laughs> <laughs> like damn Arctic foxes everywhere. <laughs> is that a, sad, is that a sad old accent? Oh, no. <laughs> It says that there is more going on here than you understand. And you have to kill her if you find her. Kill who? You know who. Well, I will. The mind will be watching. But who's... And they leave you alone. And then she'll just give them now a confused look. <laughs> As I, I guess she'll head on in. Excellent. <clears throat> and then you're sucked into the door like everybody else. And Astaria and Agris will go to their doors have a bad time oh uh, well Flynn you went in first Flynn as you are pulled into the door uh, you feel the deep crushing vacuum of space around you for a moment and then you materialize in the decks of a, this sparking flickering spaceship hallway uh, there is deep rusted steel um sort of weird graffiti painted along the walls. You can smell the burning fuel, and you recognize that this is your first ship. Well, not your first ship, but the first ship you ever worked on. What's the name of that ship? I need to check notes. Um, the... The Star Chaser. Okay. Yeah, so there you are on the Star Chaser. Uh, for the first time since you were a young man. Uh, what is Flynn feeling as this sort of nostalgic location washes over him? A growing pit in his stomach. It's fair. 
and sort of looking around, you get the um, sense that this is a memory that you have lived before. Um, you can hear the alarm klaxon begin to sound on, saying that a battle has been met. Uh, and you hear the captain, um, you hear the captain calling everybody to battle stations. Uh, I quickly like do the the side pat, like you know, am I armed? Do I have my rapier on me? Do I have my? Um... Uh, you are armed as you were armed during this memory in your life. Armed and dressed, you probably didn't even have a hat yet. <laughs> the captain wears the hat. Everybody knows that. That's right. This is the backstory of the hat. Oh. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I will. I will. I will draw my pistol and my 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 uh, rapier, which is just a standard metal rapier. It's not the, the uh, star rapier I have now. And I will head to the uh, the hull breach. Excellent. Uh, as you're making your way through the hull breach, you again feel the whole star chaser rock and rumble. Uh, sparks fly from all the control panels as you are under heavy fire. Uh, you can even hear... Um, give me a perception check. <laughs> you can hear the dice rolling. Um. <laughs> oh no! It's that kind of psychoscape. Uh, I hear nothing with a nine. Yeah, you're a little uh, overwhelmed by the rocking and rolling of the ship. Then as you come around the corner, you see that there is a deep gash in the side of the ship uh, that a insertion pod has landed in. Um, and as you're sort of taking stock of the situation, you look across and you can see uh, Dalra is there. What does Dalra look like? Uh... Uh, she, uh, she is the first mate, so she's wearing, um, uh, kind of a, um, navy blue, royal blue long coat. Uh, and over a white blouse. Uh, she is from the lore. She's a lore from Lord Republic. She's got her long flowing hair pulled back in, in a loose, very loose ponytail. And uh, as she's looking across to you uh, on the other side of this um, boarding pod, uh, she says, Flynn, get back. There's, there's something wrong with these pirates. And as she says that, there uh, you see a group of lore pirates erupt from the canister uh, in a way that you've never seen pirates do before. Uh, they sort of fall out uh, with broken bones and deep knitted scars, um, sort of cricking and cracking joints as they land <clears throat> on the deck. And look up at you with these large, weird uh, larvae sort of poking out of their orifices, out of their mouths, their nose, their eyes. And they look up at you. Uh, they let out this deep guttural noise deep from the bowels of their stomachs. And Dolra attempts to run to, to bring you to safety, but she is quickly overwhelmed by them and dragged down uh, and turned into one of these creatures. What would you like to do? Uh, uh, not again, not again, not again. Um, and yeah, um, fuck. Uh, I will, I will turn and run. And as you turn and run, you can hear their joints knitting and breaking as they bring themselves to their feet to run's not the right word after you. They sort of fall somersault, break themselves against the ground in a perpetual motion towards you. Uh, one part crawling, loping, somersaulting, cracking. It's all bad. 
And Flynn, as you're racing down the bulkheads of the Star Chaser, another one of these insertion pods slams into the hall next to you, and more of these things erupt out. And this is bad. As you were racing, uh, where are you going? Uh, I was going to my cabin. Uh, the cabin I share with Dora and her husband, and my husband, and And uh, apparently I'm cut off from that, so um, I turn tail and go down the side passage, looking for the uh, the network tunnels and stuff, the service access points and stuff throughout the, um, uh, throughout the ship. Excellent. Uh, your comlink does roar to life as you're making your way, and you can hear Anister's voice over it. He says the... Um, the ship is infested. We're we're in bad shape. Uh, where are you, Flynn? Jeffrey's tube seventeen. Run! Let's get to the escape pods. Get the hell out of here. I can't. But you and any of the crew members you could find, you have to. They um. They got me, and there's only one way to there's only one way to deal with a festrin infestation. Let me know when you're clear. And with that, uh, Flynn drops out of the one of the uh, hatches, the access access hatches, and uh, tears down another hallway towards one of the escape pods. Excellent. And as you make it to the escape pod and launch, um, you just sort of look back into the window and Anister says over the comm link, um, we'll always love you, Flynn, and we're, we're, you have to live for us. And you see, he turns the ship, and he launches it into a nearby star. And you see, sort of as the ship enters the corona of this large body it begins to disintegrate burst into flame and it is quickly melted away uh just as you remember happening eons ago or ages ago but then something that you don't remember happening happens uh the escape pod goes dark the power dies inside it and you can hear the sort of skittering noise of larvae making their way through the walls of the escape pod, breaking into the chamber where you are. And as you're sort of taking stock of the situation, you see that a number of these bugs begin to fall out of different access ports, control panels, anything that has something that they can ease their way out of and through. And they sort of coalesce and they form the shapes of Anister and Dolra, and they regard you with ever-shifting, horrible, segmented eyes. Why did you leave us, Flynn? Not really, not really, not really, not really, not really, not really. You wanted to be a captain, right? Don't they go down with the ship? We could have been together. We should have been together. Uh, give me a will save if you want to disbelieve them away from you. <laughs> Twenty five is pretty good, Flynn. As you're sort of uh, taking stock of this situation, what happens as you sort of grasp where you are, what this is, and start forcing it away from you? Um, I'm like, you're not really, you're not really, you're not really, you're not really, you're not real. They loved me and died trying to save me. Fucking pay Luna. And as I, I say that, um, I reach over to the side, 
grab my hat. And as I put the hat on, the old rusted scraper actually lights up uh, and turns into my star scraper. And I just and I just slice through them, burning them away. Excellent. And as you do that, the uh, controls for the escape pod power back up, and you are free to rocket off into space, where we will rejoin you in a moment. Chimera, as you go through your door, uh, you find yourself standing in an Aegis security office on Starhaven. Standing next to Agent Jones. Flynn's Agent Jones, not you, Agent Jones. <laughs> now you have to be specific. Yes. Hot rack. <laughs> like Coke or Pepsi or RC. I don't know which coal I am. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I'm Mr. Pib. Why am I Mr. Pib? <laughs> Did, is this a memory? Is have I been here before, or is this a new construction? Um, it's a little hard for you. You um, you get the impression that this is a memory belonging to the human inside you, mm. but you're not sure that you've been here before. It's very, mm. very strange and nebulous. Uh, but your brother Harry looks at you, and uh, he says, "Charlie, I can't believe we're on we're in space, man." What makes that difficult to believe? You know how impossible it is. I, you know, we wanted to be astronauts when we were kids, but like this is this is a whole other level. Like we're in Starhaven. We're helping Daedalus make the world a better place for people. A worthy endeavor. You all right, man? I am op uh, operating at optimum efficiency. Yes. It's a strange thing to say. Um, are we still heading over to Deb's after uh, after your mission this evening? I do not recall the mission to which you refer. Oh, you've got a debriefing uh, in ten with Agent Tate. If we had made arrangements to meet afterwards, then I will honor that agreement. Yeah, okay. Oh, and um, I have a letter for you from uh, Molina. That name doesn't register with me? No. Okay. He says, sorry, I don't know why... Uh, I think the uh, post gets a little confused with the two Agent Joneses around, but sometimes I get your daughter's mail. A reasonable mistake. I didn't read it or anything, but he hands you the letter. And you see something that has clearly been handwritten in crayon. It says Dad on it. Okay, I will open the letter. Uh, there is a drawing of a person in a, a human in a spacesuit um, and a little girl, uh, all done in sort of crayon, cartoonish. And there is a letter written on the back of this image. It says, basically, hey, Dad, I hope you're doing okay. I can't wait for you to come home next week. It's been three months since I've seen you already. Talks about how she's doing in school and how proud she is to have an astronaut daddy. Thank you, Agent Jones, for delivering the message. Call me Harry, Charlie. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Apologies, Harry. I think maybe you need to get like an eval or something. Did you did you hit your head? Not to my recollection, no. All right, well, I'll see you at Deb's later, okay? They're having karaoke tonight. And I think Daedalus is going to be there. Indeed. Well, perhaps that would be education. I will see you there, Harry. You better sing Sweet Child of Mine, because nobody sings that like you do. I will endeavor to...
deliver on this uh, performance. And uh, Agent Jones will walk away confused. <laughs> Um, after a couple of moments, a lady agent walks into the room. Um, she's wearing the Aegis armor again. She has a name tag that says Agent Tate on it. And, uh, she says, come on, uh, Harry, we're, uh, or Charlie, we're late for debrief. Very well. I'll follow. And you head into a meeting with Daedalus and Deputy Director Francois Lassine. Uh, the two of them sort of look you over. They say, Agent Jones, Agent Tate, thanks for making time to come and see us today. Um, we're sending you to follow up on that Children of Chrysalis ceremony that we caught wind of. Um, apparently they've been grabbing people in the draft snarl. We need somebody to figure out where they're taking them and what they're doing with them. And to get concrete proof that there's something nefarious going on because these people are they're doing a lot of good, quote unquote, for a lot of people. We assume they have nefarious intentions, however. Apologies, my knowledge of what you speak is limited. Have I been working on this case previously? Agent Tate sort of looks at you and says, This has been our case for like the last month, man. What are you talking about? This is your lead. Strangely, I have no recollection of these events. She sort of looks over at you. Says, we literally talked about it after dinner last night. Again, I must apologize. These memories elude me. Uh, Daedalus Deputy Director, don't worry. I'll, I'll brief him on the way over. Again, I guess. And Daedalus and the deputy director look over at you and say, okay, come back when you've got something that we can stick the chrysalis with. Agent Tate will take you out to a speeder, uh, Chimera. Okay. And you are in your Chimera form, but nobody seems to be reacting to you as Chimera. Yes, I was sort of inferring that <laughs> based on the looks I'm getting. And uh, Agent Tate, she's sort of this um, red-headed, fair-skinned woman with deep freckles across her face. Um, very uh, sort of gruff smirk as she hops into the driver's seat and looks over at you. What the hell was that, man? To what are you referring? You don't remember what we talked about last night? That is correct. Do you remember anything that, about what happened last night? I do not. I seem to be suffering a memory displacement. Give me an inside check. Tell her that she's not memorable? <laughs> I don't think I'm good at insight. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> Which makes sense for the character. <laughs> uh, oh, That's right. pretty good. Yeah, of course. Yeah, now it would make sense to roll a six. Here's a nineteen. But anyway, <laughs> um, you get the impression that there is a specific thing that she wants you to remember, that you all did together. Yes, and well, Kevin can figure that out. Chimera. Would probably <laughs> <do not. laughs> Awkward. I mean, Chimera's no overdrive, so. Oh my god. <laughs> Tried to stir the pot a little bit. <laughs> Overdrives a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Says the character who carried my effigy around in her pocket. Because. Fire season. He was her husband when he wasn't a whore. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. <laughs> See, this is why I can't remember that we're not another one anymore. <laughs> <laughs> don't make this about me <laughs> Overdrive. oh good we're starting again All right. yes! anyway welcome back so, to another war everyone yes um so yes i i know what she's hinting at but chimera would have no idea even i i feel like even with a 19 
because especially because in this sort of mental landscape i have been separated from my and this is surely the chimera unit i mean yeah. maybe he's i don't know like would he have studied sapient behavior patterns enough to get at what she's sitting at i mean you want to say the 19 is enough of a clue that he at least figures out she's well i guess he would know she's expecting him to remember something but he does not recall it and he's not he's not savvy enough to lie about it. right <laughs> oh yeah baby that'd be great <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's not a chimera line it's just not so no. say it's chimera <laughs> <laughs> that would be even more suspicious i want to hear what, uh, how over or i mean how chimera would say that say what oh, oh. baby that was great <laughs> <laughs> oh wow um, like in the technical term <laughs> oh, yes i recall last evening's activities and it was most stimulating very, very stimulating. Oh my God. <laughs> okay, that scene didn't happen, but there's a, there's a, what it would sound like. Anybody in uh, Twitch chat, you can press the little um, clapper thing to make a clip if you want to make a clip of Kevin saying that. No. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> wow. <laughs> But the ride over, uh, Agent Delilah Tate looks over at you, um, and she um, she's trying to bring your memory up to speed about what you guys are doing, um, and you head off to the Draft Snarl in the speeder. Uh, she parks outside of a nondescript warehouse, and she says, okay, this is the place. Are you ready? Ready for what? <laughs> Our operation. We're going to go in there and find some evidence. You were going to brief me about that, uh, but you instead were hinting about last evening's activities, of which I do not recall either. What is our operation? <sighs> Just get your gun and come on. Do I have a gun? I mean, no, you don't have a gun. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Although, actually, uh, with my shape shifting, I guess I could morph my hand into sort of a gun like shape to make her think everything's okay, I guess. So... Do I have a gun? Look, I mean, I still see me as Chimera, like everyone else is yep. seeing me as something else. Like, I, because Chimera doesn't have a gun. I just want Chimera to, like, be walking around like this. <laughs> What's that crazy guy doing with his fingers? I don't know. <laughs> but don't say anything. He might look this way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. And as she leads you into this nondescript warehouse, you can see there is this deep pit in the middle of it uh, that's been carved away from the natural stone. It leads down into this room where you can see this glowing blue light emanating. Uh, once you get down the stairs, you do see that in this recessed area, it appears to be some kind of cult chamber. Uh, there is a deep pit of this sort of glowing blue fluid, and there is a large man for lack of a better word wearing a white cape holding a spear or a staff of some description he's got sort of a lack of a head uh, his head his shoulders sort of have a little bump in them that have his eyes and his mouth in them and he has two large cla crab claws uh, growing out of his chest to augment his other arms and this character doesn't look familiar either I don't think you've... Uh, actually, Chimera has seen him at the uh, soiree, but he didn't have his crab claws out. He had his robe on. Okay. Uh, this is Pupil that you saw at the uh, Preserver mm -hmm. Mixer. But now he's leading a cult. Yes, but Chimera also knows that he's been leading a cult this whole time. Okay. They were the people who uh, were giving out gift baskets at the Speeder warehouse. Right, right, right. Uh, but there are a large number of people uh, sort of lined up on either side of this pit wearing white robes. And one by one, they come up to Pupil, who puts his, uh, his normal hand on their head and taps the staff into the ground. And when he does that, this blue energy courses from the staff through his body, through his hand into their head. And each of them is given a minor um, biological gift. Uh, they grow claws, they grow wings, uh, their legs disappear and become a rolling mass of tentacles. Uh, just all sorts of just random, horrible 
modifications he's making to them that they seem to be very excited about. And this, did we connect? Like, didn't we run into some weird morphic people? Did we connect them to this guy's cult at that time? Uh, not yet. Okay. Spoiler alert. <laughs> This might be information Chimera's getting for a later thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but before you and Agent Tate can go in and really do anything about it, a couple of these robed figures uh, basically sneak up behind you guys and knock you in the head. And both of you wake up uh, kneeling in front of this pupil character. And he looks down at you, Chimera. And he says, who are you who has come to interrupt my glorious mission. Hmm. So for the sake of that high insight role, I want to say Chimera's at least figured out enough to play along. I mean, not well, of course. Still talking like Chimera, but to try and, I guess, find out more. I am Agent Jones. And we are here to stop you. There is something behind your eyes, Agent Jones. My brain is contained in my skull behind my ocular orbs. That is correct. Yes. <laughs> no, I see a touch of the preservers in you. Preservers? Curious. You will be taken to Chrysalis. And uh, he sort of looks over at Agent Tate. He says, what of you? Have you the same touch of madness as your ally here? And she spits on his face. He says, very well. I see that you are of the more mundane human stock. A Terran. You are no good to me. And his little crab claws reach out, pinch down into her shoulders, lift her up, and chuck her into the blue liquid. Uh, and she melts down into goo. Wait, we've, we've encountered an Agent Tate, have we not? You have. And it's her, isn't it? As far as Chimera knows. As far as Chimera knows, yeah. Okay, well, that's more information. All right. I'm just curious. And, uh... He says, guards, seize him. And they come and they grab you, Chimera. And they knock you out again. And you wake up in a strange preserver facility. Uh, Chimera's brain recognizes this as a biomodification facility. Uh, you see a large number of pods uh, going, stretching on pretty much as far as you can see. You're in this sort of sterile white environment. And uh, before you is a holographic projection of this sort of small, twisted, insect-like uh, AI. She sort of looks down at you. Her uh, She has segmented limbs. She has got a long... Um, she's got long uh, fly-like wings. And she sort of kneels over you and makes this clicking noise as she speaks. You. You have a greater purpose, Agent Charles Jones. And she sort of taps you on your forehead. You have potential. Potential like the pupil. Come, come. And she... Um, before you can react or do anything, these sort of arms lift up and they bring you over into one of the pods and you are locked inside. And she comes up to the pod. She says, rest now. When you awake, you will be perfected. Very well. And your mind sort of shuts down, and you see and hear her sort of droning in your ear for the next uh, couple of weeks as your body breaks down and is reconstituted into the Chimera unit. And she says, your purpose is at odds with pupil's purpose. 
and I need to know which of you will survive and which of you will succeed. Go forth and listen. Listen to the voice that speaks for me in you. Speaks for you or is you? Speaks for me. Here is. Seek out Aelin. Very well. And you hear the hiss as the pod disengages and you are free to go off into the world. As you go off into the world, I think that's probably a good place for us to take our break real quick before we go and check in, see with everybody else what's going on. So thank you everybody for bearing with us this evening. We're going to get up, stretch our legs, grab a drink, grab a snack, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 